folks. So I am going to be doing my first maintenance on my 2017 Nissan Frontier, or at least first maintenance for me. And I have no idea what they did to it before I got it. So let's just assume that is nothing. And we're going to replace um, we're going to replace the air filter, and we're going to change the belt because we're getting a little squealing. Um, honestly, it's really, really early to be getting squealing on this vehicle. Yeah, we're at 30, basically 32,000 miles. That's exceptionally early. So we're going to start by, we're going to remove these. And I'm using this DeWalt driver just to speed things up. I'm going to take these off and put them somewhere safe. place they had done shit to this since uh, probably that is probably the original um, oil filter or air filter so no big deal so we we'll just squeeze that off and put this out of the way now for what I'm doing I don't need to do that but it sure makes my life easier if I can get in here so that's why we've done that now i've heard 10 millimeter but or three eighths but there's nothing on a japanese vehicle that's three eighths so i think that's a 12 millimeter socket i'll be right back millimeter socket and let me show you what we're working on so the belt goes through here down around your whatever that's probably an alternator pulley this is just an idler pulley. This is an idler pulley fan, air conditioning compressor, and that is the tensioner right there. And then that's your main pulley. So let's find somewhere for the flashlight. Good at getting shit in here and not leaving you an inch to work. Alright, that'll work. So you need a ratchet, and you're only going to turn this one way. No, nope, not that way. Not that way either, apparently. All right, well, I thought that was the tensioner, but apparently it is not. So we will keep looking because this is an asinine design. All right, so it is not the pulley I pointed out. It's actually this black one. So if you go from the main crank pulley up to your power steering pump, it's the pulley that's in between, and you only turn it one way, which loosens it. So if it doesn't loosen, that means you're turning it the wrong way. And I'm gonna get a larger um, wrench over here. Now, you do not need to use a torque wrench. I'm just using the torque wrench because it's conveniently long enough to do what I need it to do. And it's a cheap torque wrench, that. It's a Harbor Freight torque wrench, so. But that's good enough for the work that we're doing. I could not find a breaker bar or I would have used that. Alright, so we're just going to slip one of these. Alright, and then... Now, what we want to do is work this out of here. All right. All right. Let me 
construct the belt. All right, so I'm replacing it with a Deco belt. Um, this one is a hair shorter than what was in here. And before we get started, God grant me the serenity to deal with this because I know this is gonna be irritating. <laughs> yes, it is. It's already irritating. And if God isn't your thing, then maybe something else can grant you the serenity to deal with this because there just really isn't any space to work in here. And you know why there's not any space to work in here? Because they do all this with the engine out of the vehicle. Yeah, that's right. Although there are worse ways to do this. Yeah, I've got a crown. <laughs> Oh, do I know that there are worse ways to route a belt. All right, so we're almost there. a serpentine belt because only a serpent would appreciate it. All right, we're almost there. Let me see if I get some divine wisdom here on where this belt's supposed to route. Yeah, I don't. I need to reach down there and get that one. So I went online and I printed off a page out of the owner's manual because I'm too lazy to go in the glove box and get it. So anyway, this is the routing, so we'll try to figure that out down here. See what we're doing wrong. The hell? So perhaps this will not involve a trip down there, but this is just I, I'm just not tall enough. And this is even worse if you're working on like a Ford, because Ford thinks that the size of your genitals is related to the size of the truck. So they keep making them bigger and bigger and bigger with the same crappy ass engineering. All right, so. Yeah, and that's why I don't own a Ford anymore because I got tired of over-engineered products that were impossible to work on. 
I wanted something simple, which is pretty much what I got here. So we're going to disconnect that one up there and we'll come into here. Nope, that's not what we wanted. All right. There we go. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, not doing that either. Get that later. All right, that's not so bad. And I didn't have to take the top half part to do this. So let me show you what we're working with here. So it goes around this and then loops around that pulley. That's your tensioner, so that's last. That's your alternator. That's first. This is second to last. And we're in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to replace the air filter and test it to make sure nothing's wonky. And then we'll start in on the oil change. Well, all right. This is kind of surprising. I took a gamble and I ordered the cheapest thing that Rock Auto offered. I spent money on the belt because the belt's critical. But I didn't spend money on the air filter. I spent like a dollar thirty-nine, maybe. I don't know, two dollars. It was cheap. Um, and I honestly can't tell the difference. And the reason I didn't spend a whole lot of money on the air filter is that something that I believe should be changed every time you change the oil filter. It's just cheap. Um, it's cheap insurance. So I, I don't see the wisdom in spending more money on an air filter that you leave in there for longer because when it's dirty, it suffocates the engine. So here we are. Anyway, let me get this installed. Let me get this out of here. Nasty. Self, don't do that again. That's actually rather difficult to get back on. flashlight again. So I found if I put a 4x4 four four down here, it gives me just enough see what I'm doing.
definitely not anything in the way of efficient there. Now, these are cheap, and I mean cheap, places to put screws, so do not over tighten this, regardless of what you're using. And let us not forget to remove the torque wrench because that would be unpleasant. That fixed the squeakiness at 33,000 miles. I really wouldn't expect to replace an OEM belt, but it doesn't look to be that well made, so here we are. All right, let me check the oil spec because that's the next thing on the agenda today.